Good morning. This is Frank Taylor coming to you with Nature in Your Backyard. In my backyard this morning in Floyd County, Virginia. And I have to tell you, I'm really excited this morning because, well, just come straight to it. I got a snake. And I knew that I would have so much fun with this. And I know a lot of my viewers uh, will either appreciate watching this or dare to cringe and watch it themselves. There's nothing like a snake to bring out reactions in people. Some positive, some negative. Lots of people just have a natural aversion to snakes and it makes them, it makes their skin crawl. So this snake, um, I went out on a three mile walk in the forest uh, two days ago. And, you know, I'm walking around, I'm looking for stuff and I'm thinking, you know, what will be, you know, what are my upcoming episodes and just seeing what I can see. And as I've told you, we've been following spring as it unfolds. And we've gone to the woods and looked at spring woodland wildflowers. We found millipedes that became active. We found a lot of different insects that became active. Uh, I've shown you different uh, plants that are, are go through a succession of flowering as they come up. And so sure enough, as things warms up, well, snakes are coming out and being active too. And the snake I found was lying out on my driveway 10 feet from my house when I, when I got home. You can't make this stuff up. You know, and all the things I've, I've shown you, I haven't gone out to look for one thing yet. They just keep showing up uh, for me. And I say, well, let's do this for a topic because this is something people might see. So snakes are becoming active. Where have they been? And let me, let me flip my camera around while I talk about snakes and why this guy was on my driveway. So snakes, We've talked a lot about different animals overwintering and how plants overwinter. And this particular um, species, snakes, uh, overwinter as adults, of course. And they <clears throat> have to burrow down and dig down into the ground to get below the... Um, he's a wiggly one. Uh, to get below uh, the frost line where they can uh, survive. Because if a snake freezes, they'll die. So snakes are uh, commonly what we say is, oh, snakes are cold-blooded and people are warm-blooded. Well, those are really good terms because it's kind of like we're implying that the snake um, likes having cold blood and he doesn't. A better term for it is a snake is to say a snake is an exotherm. And an exotherm, mean, exo means outside, a snake gets its heat from the environment, from outside of its body. An endotherm, like me, generates my own heat, and so my heat is produced internally, so we call, we call that an endotherm. So snakes um, need to regulate their body temperature. If they get too cold, they can't be very active at all. And I think he's enjoying staying on my hand. Uh, they can't be active uh, when, when it's cold. So in order to regulate their body temperature, they'll move to places where they can warm up. Well, when I came home at about 6 o'clock after the sun had been on that driveway all day, this snake had come out to take up some of that energy from the driveway, some of that heat, and warm his body up so he could spend the night going out hunting even though the night temperatures were cool. So snakes like this one are ectotherms. Uh, ectotherms gener uh, can't make their own heat and so they regulate their heat environmentally by moving. If he's uh, too hot, he'll move to a cool place. If he's uh, too cold, he'll move to a, a warm place. I see he just opened his mouth. So you can see that periodically his tongue will come out. And his tongue comes out to uh, sample the, the atmosphere. And so he can taste and smell with his tongue and he'll pull that tongue inside and place the tips of the tongue in an organ in his mouth that does sensing. So he kind of smells and tastes uh, all in one. Now the other thing people often ask, they say, is that snake poisonous? Is that a poisonous snake? And 
uh, um, language-wise, we don't do a really great job with uh, um, getting the difference between. Um, uh, is he trying to bite me? Um, the, between the difference between poisonous and venomous, and I fell into that trap and actually said the wrong thing the other day when I was talking about spiders. And uh, Caleb, shout out to Caleb, uh, after the show said, did you mean poisonous or do you mean venomous? Poisonous refers to um, things, usually poisonous is a term to, ref, uh, to refer to things that you eat. For example, a mushroom could be poisonous. But when you talk about something that bites, we're talking about venom. So a black widow spider would be venomous or a rattlesnake or a copperhead would be venomous. So um, is the so the first question, is this a venomous snake? Well, the answer is a little bit more complicated. This snake does have venom. And then and you'll probably say, wait a minute, I thought the only venomous snakes in Virginia were copperheads, rattlesnakes, and water moccasins that you find in the tidewater area. Well, this one actually has a weak venom in his saliva, and surprisingly enough, he's got two fangs, except the fangs are way, way back in his mouth. The fangs are in the back of his mouth, and uh, he doesn't have true... Uh, modified uh, venom glands like in a rattlesnake or a copperhead but he does have a venomous saliva so when he bites his prey and these guys oh that's very dramatic isn't it so when he bites his prey um, he um, uh, will get it in his mouth and if it's like a big worm or a big salamander and he's struggling with it, he can stab it as he's swallowing it with those rear-facing fangs that are in the back of the throat, which also keeps the animal he's capturing from escaping his grip so he can swallow it. Um, uh, he'll also, uh, some of that venom in his mouth and his saliva will get in there. And it's very interesting seeing him open his, his mouth like that. You see him testing the environment, tasting and smelling with that tongue. The tips of the tongue reaches out and um, samples air or, or uh, chemicals in the environment. And then he puts that tongue back in his mouth and does his tasting. So this snake is a ringneck, um, probably, uh, I'm guessing, a northern ringneck. But um, it could be, um, we're sort of on the, uh, the borderline, I believe, between a northern species and a more southern species. And I'll get a friend of mine that's a herpetologist um, to uh, check me out on, on the exact species here. Um, so uh, can this snake bite? Well, you know, there... A lot of snakes will bite, like a black rat snake will bite, but it's not venomous. Um, this guy's mouth is so small that it would be hard for him uh, to, to actually uh, bite someone. Um, but a lot of snakes, when you first pick them up, may try to bite you, but that doesn't mean they're venomous snakes. So even a non-venomous snake can bite you, so you have to be careful when you're holding one. So... Um, Let's review, um, because I'm a teacher and that's what I do. Um, this is a ringneck snake, and you can identify it by the uh, yellow or orange ring around its neck. And it has a gray or black body. It's not slimy, it's not slimy at all. Um, a lot of people think that if you pick up a snake, it feels cold or slimy, and this one, uh, feels n neither. He's uh, scaly, but very smooth and stuff, and you can feel muscles rippling underneath. His belly is yellow to orange, and I've read that some eastern ringnecks, when disturbed, will flash their tail over or their belly over to show you the bright colors, and I guess uh, that would be to scare you. Snakes are cold-blooded, but a better term for cold-blooded is ectotherms. And the reason we find snakes out on roads a lot, a lot of times they've been run over, 
is that snakes will come out of the forest at night where it's cool and lay on the pavement at night as it radiates heat out so they can warm their body up and go back into forest and go hunting. Um, this is one of Virginia's smallest snakes. It rarely grows to more than 20 inches long. Uh, it's very harmless. Um, and its mouth is too small to, to, to bite you, though he, he, might, he might try. Um, uh, they lay eggs, um, two to ten eggs in a, in a clutch, and they'll try to lay them in a place where it's moist and yet warm, like maybe in some compost with a little bit of heat generated in it. Um, they leave the eggs, and, and that's all the parenting they do. Once they make the nest and lay the eggs in it, they're gone, and the snakes have to survive on their own. Eastern ringnecks might live up to uh, 10 years. They eat um, frogs, salamanders, worms, and some insects. I think they more prefer soft-bodied things. So um, snakes um, are becoming active, and we'll keep following springtime. Um, I'll do another episode where we talk about the uh, poisonous snakes of Virginia. Um, if you find a snake and you live close by, and I would love to um, feature it in the next episode. I'm particularly looking for juvenile black snakes, which are often mistaken for copperheads because they're not black at all. So I hope you enjoyed today's... Um, switch the camera around. I hope you enjoyed today's video on snakes. I was so excited to find this guy. Um, he's pretty cool. Um, uh, please join me again. Check out my Nature in Your Backyard um, YouTube channel. Uh, every day is a new topic, and every day I just go outside and I look for something that you might find in your backyard, neighborhood, or local park that you might run into today as spring unfolds. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you later.